We all love our blurry background and bokeh. That's what gives us the cinematic look in movies, helps us frame a picture or make the viewers focus on what we want them to focus upon. But with different kind of sensors inside of our cameras, can we achieve the same kind of background blur no matter what camera we are using? This is part two in a series I'm making on the differences between cropped sensor cameras and full frame sensor cameras. In part one, we looked at crop factor and that you have to multiply the crop factor to the focal length to get the full frame equivalent when using a crop sensor camera. And now that we all agree on that about the focal length, we can move on to aperture. Does the same apply for aperture when comparing cropped sensor cameras to full frame sensor cameras? There has been some discussion when comparing cropped to full frame if we also have to multiply the crop factor to the aperture that we are using. Some people think we have to do that and other people think we don't. So in this video I'm going to find out what's correct. Is the aperture or the f number the same on a cropped sensor camera as a full frame sensor camera and do we or do we not have to multiply the crop factor to the aperture when comparing the two. Let's find out. Hi and welcome to my channel. My name is Roger and on this channel we talk about cameras, tech gear and videography and if this is something that you're interested in consider hitting that subscribe button and if you like this video click that thumbs up button too that would really help me and this channel a lot and the best part is it's totally free for you to do so but seriously i would really appreciate the help before we begin we have to just agree on something no matter how much we talk about crop factor and focal length a 50 millimeter focal length is a 50 millimeter focal length no matter if it's a lens made for a cropped sensor camera or a full frame sensor camera. The focal length of the lens is measured by the distance the lens uses to converse light rays to a single point. And this distance is the same no matter if the lens is on a full frame camera or a cropped sensor camera. It's just the size of the sensor that changes the angle of view so that if we use a Canon M6 Mark II with a crop factor of 1.6, a 50 millimeter lens will look like an 80 millimeter lens on a full frame. The next part of the video, it's going to be a little bit technical and theoretical. So if you want to jump to the more visual parts of the video where I show you how it works in real life, go to this point in the video. But to better understand that part, I do recommend that you watch the whole video. Before we dive into the aperture on cropped versus full frame, let's talk a little bit about aperture and the F number, what it actually is. The information in this part of the video, I've mostly taken this from Gerald Undone's video on aperture and f-stop myths debunked and depth of field myths. But that guy, he talks so fast and he delivers so much information in such a short time that I've had to watch those videos a lot of times just to wrap my head around what he is actually saying but I highly recommend that you go watch those videos because he delivers a lot of useful information. I'll link to those videos and some other useful videos from Gerald's channel in the description down below. So aperture. If you take your lens, take off your lens caps and look through the lens, the opening that you see at the end of the lens, the opening that's physically inside of the lens, 
that's the aperture. Aperture is the name of that physical opening. And the blades that you can see inside the lens that opens and closes, it's called aperture blades or lens aperture diaphragm blades. When changing the F number with your camera, these blades are the ones that changes the physical opening of the aperture. And the size of that opening, that's what determines how much light is hitting your sensor. If we take a lens and look through the front of the lens, the opening or aperture we see when we look through the front of the lens, that is called an entrance pupil. So the aperture displayed to us through all that glass or those elements in the lens, that is called an entrance pupil. If you turn the lens around and look through the lens the other way, that's called the exit pupil. What you have to take note of is that even though the opening looks different depending on what end of the lens you are looking through, we haven't changed the physical size of the opening or aperture that's inside of the lens. The aperture, it's the same. So the actual size of the opening inside the lens, it's different to what we see or what the lens shows us depending on what end we look through. Understanding the diameter of the entrance pupil, it's key to understanding the F number. So that's aperture. But when we talk about the F number, the F that's in front of the numbers, the F stands for focal length. But the numbers after the F, it's not a measurement of the focal length or aperture. It's actually the ratio of the lens's focal length to the diameter of the entrance pupil as it's displayed or appears to us when we look through the front of the lens. So basically the whole F number and the numbers behind the F, it's all math. It's a math equation. To demonstrate, I have this vintage 50 millimeter lens. Let's say this 50 millimeter lens, it's set at an F 1.7. That's the math equation. 50 millimeter divided by 1.7, it's 29.4 millimeters. So the diameter of the entrance pupil with this setting, it's 2.94 centimeters, almost three centimeters. If we take a higher number in the same equation, let's say the 50 millimeter lens is set at an F3.5, the equation will be 50 millimeters divided by 3.5, which is 14.28 millimeters. So the entrance pupil will only be 1.4 centimeters wide. That's almost half the size of what it was when the number was 1.7. So the lower the F number, the bigger the opening and more light is let through the lens to the sensor. So the number you see displayed on your camera, whether it's 4, 3.5, 2.8 or 1.8, it's the number that you divide the focal length by to get how big the entrance pupil is displayed to you when looking through the lens opening. So to sum this up, I know it's difficult if you never heard of it before, but aperture, that is the physical opening that's inside of the lens. Entrance pupil is the aperture as it is displayed to you when looking through the front of the lens. The F in front of the numbers, that stands for focal length. But the numbers after the F is what you divide the focal length by to get the diameter of the entrance pupil. And F stop or F number, it's not a measurement of the aperture or the focal length, it's a measurement of the entrance pupil. And now we know that. But 
before we can compare crop sensor cameras to full frame sensor cameras, we also have to talk about depth of field because how much depth of field you have that determines how much blurry background you get. So what actually affects the depth of field? Actually, it's only two things that directly impacts your depth of field. One, distance to your subject. The further away you are from your subject, the deeper the depth of field is going to be. And the closer you are to your subject, the shallower your depth of field is going to be. And two, the diameter of the entrance pupil. The smaller or narrower the diameter of the entrance pupil is, the deeper the depth of field is going to be. And the wider the diameter of the entrance pupil is, the shallower the depth of field it's going to be. I made a video about depth of field, so if you want to watch that, you can watch this video. Some may say that sensor size also is a factor that affects depth of field. Actually, it isn't. But it may change your composition or your distance to the subject because of the crop factor. Now that the theoretical part is done, let's see how it looks when we actually use our camera. And for those of you that skipped this part, welcome back. So first, let's use my EF 50mm lens on my full frame camera, the EOS R, and then on my crop sensor camera, my Canon M6 Mark II. For our subject, I've used a measuring tape so we more easily or accurately can see where the depth of field is. Here we have the same distance to the measuring tape. We are going to use the same setting on the camera or the lens. We're going to use an f1.8 on both cameras. And the crop sensor camera, it gives us this image. And on the full frame camera, it gives us this image. And if we zoom in on the full frame image, to line it up with the image from the crop sensor camera, we see that the same lens with the same setting gives us the same depth of field, the same blurry background. So there is no difference between a full frame sensor camera and a crop sensor camera when it comes to depth of field when we are using the same lens, same setting, and having the same distance to the subject. Now, if we wanted the same framing with the same lens, we would have to place the camera 1.6 times further back. And as we know, the further away we are from the subject, the deeper the depth of field is going to be. So by moving the camera further back, the depth of field is going to change and it won't be the same, even though we have the same lens and the same setting. For our test number two, to get the same framing or the full frame equivalent on the crop sensor camera, we have to compensate for moving the camera further back. And to do this, we have to use the thing that we already know about, that we have to multiply the focal length to the crop factor to get the full frame equivalent. To do this with the lens that I have in hand, I took the EF-M 22mm on my M6 Mark II and the RF 35mm on my Canon EOS R. And that's because 22 multiplied by the crop factor of 1.6 is 35.2. So now we have almost the same framing. So let's test this out with the same setting and let's use F2 on both lenses since F2 is the widest option on the 22 millimeter. If we compare these two, we now see that the depth of field is not the same. There is a deeper depth of field on a 22 millimeter lens than there are on the 35 millimeter lens. 
and this is because the diameter of the entrance pupil it's not the same. Let's do the math on this as we talked about in the theoretical section of this video. Let's take this 22 millimeter divided by the number behind the F which is 2 and then you get 11 millimeters. Then do the same with the 35 millimeter, divide that by 2 and we get 17.5 millimeters. So the diameter of the entrance pupil it's wider on the 35 millimeter lens. So to compensate for this and make the diameter of the entrance pupil the same on both lenses we have to multiply the crop factor to the f2 on the 22 millimeter. So 1.6 times f2 that is 3.2. So if we now set the full frame lens the 35 millimeter at 3.2 and we now compare these two images we see that the depth of field it's more equivalent to each other and that means that we have to multiply the aperture to the crop factor to get the equivalent of a full frame lens. So with what we now know if we use this full frame lens with our EOS R and we have the 35 millimeter lens at f1.8 and we want to get that same looking image on the cropped sensor M6 Mark II. We now have to do our math again, but now we have to turn the equation around. We now have to divide the focal length 35 millimeters and the f1.8 by the crop factor of 1.6. And then you get a 22 millimeter lens, but you need an f1.12 rounded up to f1.1 to get the same equivalent. But this lens, a 22 millimeter f1.1, that lens doesn't exist. So to answer our question in the beginning of the video, can we achieve the same kind of background blur no matter what camera we are using? No, we can't. It all depends on what setting you have on your lens, but like we said, with a 35 millimeter f1.8, f you can't achieve the same look with a cropped sensor camera. And for a second question, when we want to find a full frame equivalent, do we have to multiply both the focal length and the F number? The answer is yes. Yes, we do. But does any of this actually matter? Let's say a person have a Canon M6 Mark II or a 90D or a Sony A6400 or any kind of cropped sensor camera and that camera is the only camera that that person have. Does it really matter what the full frame equivalent of that camera is? No, it doesn't. To that person a 22 millimeter lens at f2 it looks like what it does because we use the gear that we have to the limits that they have. So this was part two in the series of cropped versus full frame. I hope you got something out of this video. If things was difficult just go back and watch it again. And if you did get something out of this video hit that thumbs up button down below. And if you don't want to miss part three in this series you have to hit that subscribe button and click that notification bell too so you get a notification when that video drops. So that's it for me. Thank you for watching and maybe I will see you in another video. Bye.